So this uh, last bit of theatre news that we have this week is actually from our colleague Rob Dex, who spoke to Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick about the big new West End hit that uh, Nick and Nancy are going to talk about shortly, Plaza Suite. And he got some rather interesting revelations, one of which seems to have gone slightly viral, that um, she loves the tube line mm. and um, wants to go to all four corners of the of the tube map. Um, but there was some other interesting stuff. Uh, was there anything that leapt out to you? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the fact that um, although this is her West End acting debut, it is not the first time she has trod on a West End stage. That's a, a nice distinction, but it makes sense. She mm. actually appeared here, uh, didn't appear here, she rehearsed here mm. as a child actor on the stage of the Theatre Royal Drury Lane for a play that subsequently opened in America. It was um, The Innocence by William Archibald. But and the notable thing was the director. It was directed by Harold Pinter Amazing. and apparently had to be rehearsed here because he wouldn't go to America. And it starred Claire Bloom and a, and a tiny, even tinier than she is now, Sarah <laughs> Jessica Parker. Yeah. Um, but how remarkable is yeah. that? You talk about generations, you yeah. know, the, the bloke who wrote The Homecoming, which we saw quite recently yes. as the star of Sex in the City. And Six it? Degrees of Separation. Yeah. I mean, talk about that. But I mean, if we've so we've recently had the motive in the queue currently in the West End, mm. won our Best Play Award this year about the rehearsal room uh, for the Gielgud, uh, Richard Burton, Hamlet mm. in the 60s. I want to see a play about the Sarah Jessica Parker, Harold Pinter, Claire Bloom um, <laughs> production, yeah, yeah. The Innocence, in 1976. <laughs> the other interesting thing was um, her talking about what she talks to her husband about after the show and the big problem she has in the West End. I think we've got a clip to queue up. We don't talk much about the show. That seems to, without saying it, we know it wouldn't probably be good to do the show talk about the show, <laughs> come back to the show, talk more about the show. So. I think any conversations we have that are specific to the show are far more the yeah. audience. Uh, like someone will say, how was the audience? Or, or you're, you've forgotten two lines. Yeah, that's not something we reprimand. It's more like someone maybe apologizing for jumping one line, which is just like, it doesn't, it's okay. Um, but it's more related to how will we get to a kitchen that's remaining open <laughs> Uh, given that your city, for all of its, I mean, I can't, I could go on and on about how deeply I'm in love with the city. However, if you have a curtain that comes down at 10, 12, 10, 14, and it's your big meal of the day and you're starving, the hustle to get before you're holding up an entire staff and kitchen, which is the last thing we want to do, that's the talk that surrounds the show is, where is our meal tonight? <laughs> What's interesting about that is that, you know, like many theatre goers, after seeing a show, they're desperate for somewhere to have a drink and have a bite to eat. Mm. Now, I mentioned this to our going out editor, David Ellis, who was on the podcast quite recently to give us tips on where to have a pre and post show drink. And uh, the day after this podcast lands on Monday, there will be a piece about where Sarah, Matthew and the rest of us can go and get a late night bite 